We just heard a lot about social media. Now we're going to talk about technology. So we're going to, now we're going to, we're going to get into the, the nuts and, and bolts, or the pipes and the APIs uh, that are currently revolutionizing uh, your business as much as, as ours, but yours in a, in a slightly different way. So I am going to welcome to the Grand Hyatt stage my two guests, Clement Go, who's the head of business development for the Singapore-based 3D Networks. Come on. Welcome, Clement. And John Blanco, who is the co-founder and CEO of Afin. So also Singapore-based. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. So if we're going to talk about hardware, and we are going to talk about hardware, um, I just want, I, I, I want to open with a, a question I have, and I'm going to, I'm going to pose it to you, Clement, because, you know, hotels are, I spend my life going in and out of them. Sometimes luxury, sometimes, as I said earlier, not so luxury. There is a direct correlation, in my experience, between the price of the room and the price I pay for Wi-Fi. And it's not what you would think. At a cheap hotel, the one I told you about before in Bismarck, North Dakota, Wi-Fi is free. And yet, at a fancy hotel, recently renovated, Wi-Fi costs a lot of money. Why is that? Well, um, in my view, I think for the cheaper hotels, they tend to be uh, best effort. You know, So they'll just give you something, uh, you know, probably lower cost or cheaply and it's just uh, and it's just based on best effort if if you want to provide good quality Wi-Fi then you know there's a lot more investments that need to come in and maybe that's the reason why uh, well the higher end hotels you know who obviously look into providing high quality Wi-Fi uh, would have to charge for them yeah. I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it. I think that there is probably a great debate between owners and operators over this question, right? Mm. Um, you know, there was a time when Wi-Fi was chargeable. I think it's very much an uh, amenity now that you know, every or commodity now that everybody thinks and expects it for free. Uh, very much like breakfast should be included into the room rate. Uh, so should Wi-Fi. Uh, but there is a cost of keeping the high bandwidth over there. You need to have the securities to log in, the portals, uh, to be able to interface that to the property management system, uh, to maintain the networks and the switches that needs to run from the basement all the way up to the highest you know, guest floor, the Wi-Fi APs that needs to be installed. And all that costs money you know, to maintain. It breaks down. You know? Wi-Fi is never fast enough. Uh, you know, so every day you probably get two or three complaint letters that your Wi-Fi is never fast enough to the GM, you know, and and it keeps on going, you know, and never ne nothing is fast enough, you know. So, John, you've, you've yeah. faced this issue in your career. What do you think it is? I think of it a little more democratically. I okay. Think, uh, free Wi-Fi for all the people at very high speeds. <laughs> I think that's really the way to go. I think nowadays there's there's so many solutions, and infrastructure itself has has come down in cost considerably. If it's fiber whatever it is. Um, so there really is no, honestly, excuse for not providing that as a standard amenity. Just as you have you know, a comfortable bed and a clean room, uh, it's, it's a minimum standard. It's a minimum expectation of, of I think. And yet, why do you reckon there is this delay? I mean, I'm, I, I, I hate, we're all friends here, so I'm going to be, uh, there's always a phone in the bathroom. Nobody has phones in bathrooms. You don't need a phone in the bathroom, and yet every hotel bathroom has a phone. But not every hotel has unlimited free Wi-Fi for all. And we get that there are some hardware reasons for that, but it seems like, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems as if there is this lag between what the, what the hotel is providing and, and what the customer wants. Is that? It's really P&L driven, business driven. I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard for, I mean, and being, you know, coming from a hotel background, 25 years, it's letting go of that little bit of revenue stream that populates that P&L and that you're ultimately accountable for, right? Think of mini bars. Think of, you know, there's a lot of incredible resorts now that include mini bar consumption. Right. Maybe not everything, but uh, a great deal of items. Uh, and it's those bits of, 
um, revenue stream that we that we cling to, right? Still holding out for As the long distance the phone picture. call on the corded phone and the lots of pornography and all that sort of right. stuff. All gone. Essential. All gone. That bathroom phone though is pretty handy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later More in another details. panel. Um, Kami, can you talk a little bit um, about the about the infrastructure, about some of the challenges that uh, hotel owners or operators face in, in um, retrofitting a, a hotel with the kind of hardware that you were describing? Yep, so uh, the technologies are obviously now moving uh, you know, from copper into fiber, and you, know, you have fiber to the home now, so why not fiber to the room? So you know, these are the things that uh, needs to be considered, especially in building a, a new hotel. Uh, the challenge sometimes for myself, I mean, being having worked in a hotel before from technology uh, and all the way now, I'm, I'm on a bit more on the uh, supplier side. Uh, I, I see now two sides uh, of the camp, so I guess I have the bit of a benefit. How, how do you convince an owner to invest in the right technology? Uh, you know, and then you have the management who's going to be running to operate it. You know, sometimes they tend to be obviously two different groups. And, uh, and, and ourselves, we kind of get caught in between, you know. You don't do it right, you know, and then you, 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 the operator would have a problem trying to provide that level of service. Uh, you know, you can only render service either through uh, another human being, it's, it's, hot, it's hot hospitality anyway, or you render the service through some form of technology uh, in order to live up to that brand promise of, you know, guest services and, and, and service delivery. You, you're not going to do it later and, and rip out wallpapers. So doing it right from the first time is very important. Uh, but sometimes brand and brand management, uh, you know, they're a little bit more, um, maybe more desperate to secure that property or that management contract. And so they tend to give in to the technology that would be required if the hotel owner was not prepared to put in the right investment. So and that's where the challenges lie. So the hotel doesn't get renovated for maybe another seven, ten years. Well, what do you do? You know? And so that's where the hotel management or the general manager would have to live with whatever investment technology there is. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about Internet of Things, and soon we're moving to the Internet of Hotels, you know, about sensor-based uh, uh, technologies uh, uh, throughout the entire hotel building. What are you going to do about that one? Yeah. yeah. Well, hello, Siri, when you walk in. Exactly. The room. Yeah. So, what, um, we're now talking about uh, kind of the guest experience um, once, I'm, lear I'm learning your words, once on property. Um, is that the correct use of that phrase? Absolutely. For, for, thank think you. For, for the purposes of, for the yeah, purposes of this. It yeah. works. So, um, but I'm curious at the, at the, the very beginning of the, of the transaction. Now, John, you, you've literally just launched a company that depends on technology for that, for that first point of contact and mm -hmm. all the way through. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first and foremost, we're, we're very proud to be a, a Singapore-based startup uh, in the luxury travel space. And a uh, combination of a tech company with a travel solution on the, on the high end. Um, and we really uh, leverage our technology three ways. One is in uh, managing the experience, and our product essentially takes uh, a customer, our member base, through uh, itinerary planning all the way into destination services coordination and management, so beginning to end. So heavily leveraging tech for that purpose. Secondly, uh, communication tools. So um, there's incredible uh, applications and solutions out there that you can build into your back ends. And in our case, we're, we're building our own back end, so we have the luxury of, of uh, customizing and, and building something somewhat from scratch, but using some solutions that are off the shelf. Uh, an example is Smooch, which is a, a, an integration which allows you to communicate with your member, your customer, with their preferred messaging uh, solution. WhatsApp, WeChat, whatever it is, rather than forcing them into one that is proprietary. You know, you have to download my app to communicate with me. There's nothing no, more irritating, no right? I mean, no, nothing negative about hotel apps, but it's that, that adoption isn't there because of that, that hurdle that, you know, I gotta download that app. So uh, messaging is a second piece. Communicating with our member pre, during their experience and, and, and afterwards as well. And then third is, is content. So uh, business intelligence tools and analytics that we use to 
uh, tailor and personalize their itineraries uh, pre-travel and also when they're in destination. So we, we build this incredibly robust profile uh, of our members based on uh, how we see them consuming content, how we see them on our own website, um, and essentially what we aspire to do in luxury hotels, and, and James and, and, and uh, Puri, you'll remember this in, in the early Ritz-Carlton days, we would uh, give staff members little notepads back in the late 80s, the like guest preference pads, and their job, part of their job during the day was to notice that, you know, Mr. Smith likes uh, soy milk in his coffee, write it down, hand it into someone that types it into a, a computer, and hopefully the next day, the person in the restaurant automatically brings them that, that coffee with soy milk because, so it, it was a very archaic way to do, it, and that, that was the beginning of this, this sort of building of robust, um, targeted, uh, preference-driven uh, content to try to anticipate and manage these experiences and create unique. Which is, still, which is still the case. You want observant service providers. Absolutely. And, you, yeah. and, and then you want management tools that are going to allow you to share Absolutely. that information easily. Right? Absolutely. Tech to us ultimately is about, it should never remove that essential piece of, of, of what we are, I think, in luxury travel, which is that human contact, that uh, authenticity, which is very individual, right? Right. It's not, my authenticity is not the same as yours. We were talking about that at lunch. My authenticity of an experience eating in Vietnam is sitting on a plastic school, stool and slurping some pho uh, somewhere in Hanoi. Yours might be different, right? So, and I'm able to identify that through, again, through content, how I'm consuming content uh, online. Um, so, uh, it should not remove that piece of it. It should make it more agile and more targeted and tailored. Right. So that's really how we see it. So, um, Clement, if I can go to you for a moment, do you see, um, apart from, from running pipe, as it were, apart from the hardware, are you seeing new uh, software solutions for this very issue of guest preferences, of booking, of following people through their visit? Yeah, so I guess one of the major challenges is how do we bring uh, uh, that kind of level of, of, of you know, individual preferences and, and that kind of recognition you know, to the hotel upon the arrival of a guest. Uh, you know, with the ability of everybody now carrying a smartphone, for example, you know, how could we have all that kind of preferences that you have and have that being picked up automatically somehow by the hotel you know, uh, or to be able to individualize the, your water temperature, you know, your, the lighting controls and you know, things that you like to be able to stream uh, you know, uh, your content obviously onto the TV and yet do that seamlessly, easily and yet in a secure way so that you don't end up controlling somebody else's lights in the room next to you and casting your video content to the other person's TV. That would that, be bad. Yes, that, exactly. Perilous. <laughs> so, you know, you have all this ability when you, 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 when you go home, you know, why can't you do it in a hotel, you know, and, and how do you do all that, you know, so... So uh, what's that, the answer? Was, why yeah. can't I? I mean, you know, it really requires quite a bit of, uh, you know, network engineering to, to try to make that happen, you know, what we consider as a, a dynamic, uh, you know, kind of private area network, you know, that is transient, you know, you come and you go and you come and another guest would come and then go, you know, it, it creates it and it, it disappears and it recreates it again. And everything that's in the room is connected to your phone. You know, the TV is connected to your phone. The room controls are connected to your phone. IP water management. You don't have to mix between hot and cold. You know, you just press a button. It knows what temperature it is. It mixes it for you and just comes out that way. You know, how do we do all these things uh, easily? Um, you know, I and think when? That's, yeah. That sounds good. I would like to do that. Without having to download an application and things like this. You know, things that are, are comfortable that works with your WhatsApp and WeChat and all the other stuff that just works automatically. How do we catch it and make that happen? I think that's the way uh, it should go. To be able to provide the level of service, uh, you know, subtly through the technology, you know, and, and to be able to provide that, that service almost automatically, invisibly, you know, through that, the, 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 the technology that you have on your, on your own body, and somehow link that, link that up to a, a room that's just, that's just conscious of you. Right, yeah. so in the meantime, for you, John, it, that should be the case, but it's you're just calling a guy, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the that's the promise of the private travel club is that I'm in this villa and, and I can just call the guy, and, and that's gonna that's a sort of value proposition to 
the business model that you're providing. And a bit beyond that, we, we're, we're working with a, a, a startup out of uh, Bangkok, which is a tool uh, that is a in-destination itinerary uh, tool that also allows you to communicate with your guests. So if you travel with friends, which, which many of us do in this region, and uh, two or three other couples or with your family, you're able to uh, not only see and contribute to your itinerary, say, hey guys, let's change the spot for, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted from last night, let's have the destination manager or the destination concierge switch our spot to an hour later and let's go fishing instead. And so it's real time communication, uh, immediate response times, and it's, it's less of the sort of the, the traditional hotel, pick up the phone, uh, ask the concierge, right. uh, reactive kind of uh, uh, service delivery. So it's, it's, again, it's levering technology. It's not removing the human element because mm -hmm. there is that person there that's going to respond uh, uh, in, in a timely fashion and that will communicate and, and be there to take you in hand. Um, but it's just more agile and much more. Uh, so an another question which actually bridges uh, both you, so you can, you can jump for the answer or I can ask you serially. Um, the, we've heard a lot today about this, um, uh, what is it? The, the, it's the business leisure, the leisure person, this portmanteau word, leisure person. Um, and it, it, or pleasure, I'm sorry. You pronounce it pleasure. So business and leisure. Um, I'm very curious uh, in how that is affecting one's notion of hotel tech. Um, Traditionally, or recently, the best place to, to deal with the internet was in the business center of a, a hotel. For experience-based travel, um, you kind of want to put business as aside, but you are going to check in. Um, how, do you, how do you see that playing out over the next few years as we get better universal Wi-Fi within the rooms? And as we uh, start to go further afield in our luxury travel than simply a resort, hmm. I've bamboozled you. Not at all. The, uh, I think the concept of, of, of pleasure, bleacher, uh, tomato, tomato, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's always existed, right? We're always kind of blending in. We're, we're all very busy. And, and some in one way or another, we're connected to that livelihood, right? Yep. What's, what's putting food on the table is paying for that holiday. Uh, it used to be a business center, and you'd sneak away and, and, and log in somewhere. Uh, and now it's just much more accessible and agile. So it, it's, I think it's a reality that's always existed. It's, um, it's got a great neat name now. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's facilitated and much more accessible now, no matter where you go. So you're always kind of bleasuring or bleasuring, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, inevitably, unfortunately, right? We're all yeah. a bit uh, tied to our technology and whatever our respective businesses are. Uh, e even if we have the good fortune of not having to work for a living, it's somehow, uh, if it's c picking up content that's tied to, uh, you know. Your uh, interests. Uh, your um, interests are well, wait for the 2017 Bleasure line, and that's going to be, those are going to be some handsome clothes. Clement, do you think the business center is going away at the high end of luxury travel? I think there will always be a group of guests who would love to have someone at their beck and call. I think, yeah, there'll be people who just, for example, I know I, know I had an ex-boss who doesn't even travel with documents, you know, he would ship his documents by DHL all the way up to New York and then he would fly there, you know, and, and, and so he would want someone to take care of his documents and do all the printing and all the other stuff right there at the business center. And because obviously you don't have some of these facilities available in the room, you know, even though you may have Wi-Fi, you may not have a printer, you don't have a copier. So some of these things may still be required, especially for the high-end leisure market. Yeah, okay. I'd, I would just like to press the button and have it yeah. come and, yeah. Yeah. and go, go to that sad room. It's often a sad room, I find. Actually, go there for the free bottle of water. No, just there you go. There, just grab go and grab the bottle of water. You know there'll be the one there, or an apple. You're our operators. You have questions about how these pipes are working. You maybe uh, have an answer to why there is a phone in the bathroom. We want to hear from you. 
We've got those nice men and women with the, with the mics, and so we're gonna take a few minutes of questions from you before we go to a coffee break. Hi, thank you, uh, Lillian Lee from Reuter Communications. My question is around um, technology and innovation in 2017. Can you name one that you think will be the biggest impact in your company or industry? So is it VR, is it, is it uh, 360 views? What do you think is one innovative technological trend happening in 2017? For, for us, it's, it's 360. So it's, uh, because we're a, a, we have a captive audience, our member base, right? It's not, uh, a, a, it's a very targeted product and then we have a very uh, defined audience that we personalize to a very high degree uh, that we communicate with and that we engage to a very high degree. So the, the 360 aspect of being able to manage that communication and manage then the touch points from itinerary planning to uh, in destination, uh, agility, response time, uh, discerning you know, what this person might prefer or want in Niseco versus Barcelona. Um, that for us is the most critical piece. Um, I mentioned communication. Uh, all of that is, is, is I think, uh, the easy ones, the easy fixes, because there are a lot of great solutions for uh, um, leveraging existing platforms that are so robust, you know, the WhatsApps and the WeChats. But that 360 is, is, is quite critical for us. And presumably it will, if VR takes off, it would be VR. Because if, you, if, if, you, if that technology went wide, it would be pretty neat to be able to visit the villa before I rented mm. it. But 360 in the meantime is, pre uh, is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Clement's in. Since, since, you know, well, you know, uh, let, me, let me take one, one part for, for the answer as well. Um, uh, for, I mean, 2017, I mean, if we could, for example, look into, uh, it, it, as I was mentioning earlier, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Hotels. Uh, I have a little, nice little diagram. I don't know if you can even see it. This is uh, an example of how you could potentially put technology. Imagine if I had a little button on my laundry bag, you know, I could put my, my clothing in and just hit a little button and someone would know to come and pick it up. You know, and, and these are things which is what we would call a sensor base. You know, you would be able to send out little signals in and around the hotel about the things that you need. And an example, obviously, was uh, the discussion about putting food trays, for example, along the corridor and someone would know to come and pick it up because, you know, the building is aware where the tray is, for example. So would that be great if, for example, I had a button if I wanted a food basket instead of having to put a food basket into every room for every arrival and nobody really eats that and it's a bit of a waste. So if you need a food basket, hit this button and a fruit basket be brought up, for example, could be an idea. Using passive, uh, free, almost free, you know, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi type technologies, which is available today. I'm gonna pause for a yeah. second to ask a question of all of you. Is that true? People don't eat the fruit basket generally? It sits there and rots? I hear, let the record record a murmur of assent. <laughs> That's, it depends on the fruit. It depends on the fruit? Well, obviously, it's the wrong sort of fruit. <laughs> it's like, no, it just sits there and rots. Um, another question, perhaps. I'm learning so much today. And yes, speaking of technology, how much uh, can technology be trusted? Um, and how do we protect ourselves from those techie guys in knowing too much about our privacy? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's a pretty narrow question, John. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, most uh, uh, Singapore in particular, uh, privacy is, is extremely uh, regulated and important, and, and, uh, and so you have to abide by the rules. And, and no matter what you're doing uh, with technology and, and gathering content and analytics and, and trying to anticipate uh, that, uh, that person's consumption habits or, or what they might, might want next. So it is a fine line, but I think there uh, are enough uh, uh, rules of play in, in place that govern it uh, and that protect uh, that you know us crossing that line. Um, there's opinion, some I mean. there's some hardware issues as well, right, Clement? Or at least network issues. Well, I mean the networks will always be there for us to transmit and receive data. I guess the question is where you put that boundary to how much information you're prepared to share. You might be prepared to share more information because the person is uh, your doctor, so you, you, know, you would have more stuff to share. But in the hotel, what are you prepared to share? You know, and, and could you, 
uh, define that such that you, know, you may have your device perhaps one day where when you're home you have more things connected, when you're a hotel you have certain things that are shared uh, with the devices around you. Uh, I don't think we have hit that stage yet, uh, but uh, that question could be referred more towards the things that they do, pre-booking and all that stuff. So, yeah, so obviously the security and the background, how we share that database is, uh, uh, is, is, is very important. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to where it will be safe. Hyatt, please bring me some fruit. <laughs> and then what will come? <laughs> yeah. How far are we from the day where that's going to happen? <laughs> Alexa, please bring me yeah. some towels. The guy will knock on the door. <laughs> I have toast for you. Alexa, you idiot. <laughs> it's all going to happen, right? <laughs> Actually, the, the, the sensors of the room will detect moisture on your body, James. <laughs> and then, and before you even have to say anything, it'll huh? come. Anticipate. They'll, they'll note, note simian tendencies and bananas will be at the door. <laughs> not I with still, you, James. I still to this not day get scrambled eggs in every Ritz Carlton. I ordered them once and I wanted them well done. 20 years later, they say, you want your scrambled eggs well done? Yeah. Like, Please, don't ever give me another egg. <laughs> Clement, do you yeah. think uh, that's a possibility that uh, yeah. forms um, like Alexa would Exactly. I mean, 20, 30 years ago, you know, you probably had more technology in hotels than at home. But right now, in the home, you have more technology than the hotels. You, know, you have multiple TVs, you've got stereo, Wi-Fi, everything, you know. And, and hotels somehow still seem not to be able to keep up. Uh, I, I don't know why. But as you can see, all the home automation, for example, my car, I mean, you know, I would have a dongle in my pocket, touch the handle, and it would unlock the door. You know, and even then, hotels we still struggle with. You know, whether we want mobile keys and you just have to tap the car, you know, things like that. Why? Why do we even have all these uh, challenges? You know, is it because we're just afraid? Uh, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a statement. Maybe it was just legacy thinking. You know, it's not legacy technology or anything. It's just the legacy thinking. You know, I think hotels tend to be copycats most of the time. Uh, we're afraid to try new things. The airlines are definitely ahead ahead of hotels. So. Alexa, I mean, you know, voice assistant, if those who have not read about it, I mean, that could easily be done. The challenges obviously would be, especially in Asia, you know, be, you know, language issues, you know, for example, how, how we speak and how, how accurate that can be. Uh, but until, until we centralize the hotels and allow for these things to happen, I mean, that would really, that was really a, a, good, a good thing. I mean, we're already thinking about Alexa in the hotels and how we're going to do things like this. Um, you know, would, would hotels be even be open to this, you know? Uh, or is it going to be just another gimmick? Well, it's not another gimmick. It's, it's, I mean, as we see in the home, it's, it's working. And so the question is, are hoteliers going to yeah. accept it? Or are they going to say, no, black and white TV? So you spoke about how technology has changed so quickly just the past few years and hotels not keeping up. So we're, we have just begun civil works and logistics to get to a greenfield island that is totally uninhabited to begin a couple of hotels. The first of which will, is expected to open in, in 2020, with the second in perhaps 2023. And the idea is to have those relevant for 30 years. What are your thoughts into, if you are open to change and if you are starting greenfield, how do you prepare for the technology that will be relevant in 2030, but plan it today? Uh for myself, I would run, for example, infrastructure-wise, I'll put, I'll put fiber to the room. Uh, fiber is the fastest medium. Uh, you used to have CAT 3, CAT 4, CAT 5, CAT 6, you know, CAT 7 today. I'll just run fiber optics into every single room. Uh, make sure, because that would be the fastest medium to, ca uh, to carry uh, data. And I, that would be one, one sure way I would do it. I'll run fiber to the, every room. Um, I would consider probably putting in, you know, controllers. Um, IP sensors within the rooms where you would do away, for example, I mean, there are technologies right there, right now where you would be able to do away with the, the key card. Now, if you were to tap your mobile phone onto the door lock, then the, uh, how are you going to turn on the light? You, you still need to have a key card to slot it into that thing, right? The energy saving little mm -hmm. you know, panel and then to turn on the lights. Now, you're going to have a, a, a wireless way of just mobile way of just turning on the, 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 the door, if I were just to tap my phone and open up the door, the door, I can't insert my phone to turn on the door lock. So all that needs to start to communicate, right? So when you open the door, the lights come on, a welcome scene comes on, you know, all that needs to talk IP wirelessly with each other. So I think that's what you need to do to provide that kind of level of capability. Look out for 
technology and suppliers that provide that form of technology that's out there right now, I think then you would be able to be ready. You know, door lights and panels and controls, all these little lighting controls that you have could have Bluetooth sensors behind or IoT sensors at the back, you know, where you could actually embed it across the room where you can then eventually leverage on that platform to make things happen uh, as technology progresses. That's scary. That was a scary answer, and a, and 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 a correct one. I mean, one wonder, like I hope, I wonder if in 30 years fiber optic is, you know, copper. I mean, you guys are pulling through the new the fiber what post you know fiber optics 2.0. Um, are your are your homes wired? They are. So. so uh, our inventory, per se, to share a little bit of our model. Yeah. It's not a plug, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> uh, is a collection of uh, homes that we manage and service at a very high level exclusively. They're not only available to our members. And we do invest in each a little capital, and we call it os &E, operating supplies, and technology. So bedding, what you would expect in all of your beautiful hotels, a wonderful bedding product, uh, bathroom amenities, et cetera, et cetera, towels. Of a, uh, great quality, but technology is one. So Sonos, for example, mm -hmm. is, is one of, of our minimum standards. Um, Wi-Fi, strong, at, which is challenging, right? And in places like Phuket or uh, in the more remote areas where service providers are not quite there in their own infrastructure. Um, so it's, you know, having to complement that and try to achieve uh, uh, an acceptable standard in, in Wi-Fi, for example. But uh, not beyond that. I, uh, certainly no sensors. Certainly right. not. Uh, well, we'll uh, start with we'll start with built-in Wi-Fi and, and yeah. move from there. Sure. I'd like to ask that we reconvene in 30 years and see how Clement did. We'll we'll be right here. Um, but in the meantime, let's go have a cup of coffee and then we'll come back for more panels. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. fellas. Thank you.